everyone. A very happy new year. A very happy new year to all of you, and welcome to this beautiful workshop today. Just a brief background about Dr. Prabhakar Rao. You would have seen the beautiful flyer that says uh, he's a trustee with the Sri Sri Institute of Agricultural Sciences and Technology. He has a PhD in agriculture and plant genetics and breeding. So he's actually a landscape architect by profession and he's got a background which is like, as you've read, he's a plant scientist, but he's a natural farmer. He's a globally renowned teacher. He goes all over the world teaching uh, all that he has to share. And today in particular, we are going to look at his landscaping skills. So he has been a lead landscape artist in some of the most beautiful and renowned projects in India and abroad, actually. In India, for instance, the Central Vista Delhi project, including the new parliament building, he was the lead landscape artist for that, as well as for the Kashi Vishwanath corridor. We saw the opening recently and all the beautiful setups. So he was the lead landscape artist for that as well. He's uh, also done the Pune Riverfront, the Tapi Riverfront, and so many other projects. So we really are very lucky today to have someone like Dr. Prabhakar Rao going to tell us about how to have gardens that appeal to all the senses, sensory um, perceptions. So I would like to invite Dr. Rao over and um, I guess we can give you a hand virtually, Dr. Rao, but welcome, welcome. And we are so happy to have you here today. Over to you. Thank you so much, Kritika, and a wonderful Happy New Year to all the participants who are here. It's a great way to start off the new year with a talk on something called the, uh, the Panchendriya uh, Bhartikas. You know, there is a concept in our tradition, uh, in our Vedic tradition, where gardens were created to excite every one of the five senses. Uh, very beautiful, uh, you know, knowledge. And we are going to give a little bit of uh, interesting interpretation of that for our modern times. Uh, then uh, thank you so much, Rahul. Rahul, you have been amazing because you are so consistent, you know, in uh, pinging me every couple of months, uh, you know, you ping me almost every two months, you are pinging me for a talk, uh, which I cannot say no to when you ask. Uh, so, um, you know, you are so regular at that. So uh, thank you again. And the ABC, uh, uh, Art of Living uh, Bureau of Communications for, uh, you know, organizing such talks. Uh, I think it's a wonderful thing that's happening in our Art of Living. So, uh, Without much more ado, uh, as I always say, uh, I see there is lots and lots of people, very familiar names because I'm seeing a lot of you in my ongoing Mandala Vatika course, uh, uh, which is uh, happening at the same time. So a lot of people have come from there, but I see a lot of others from our old sessions that Rahul has organized. So it's wonderful to see you all. Happy New Year to all. And let me start off uh, with a little bit of a screen share, or let me try and talk about uh, what we are, how, what we, how we are going to structure this evening. Uh, like uh, Rahul said earlier, what we are going to do is we are going to, I'm going to talk not for more than about half an hour, 35 minutes, and I'm going to present to you a concept in gardening, which uh, many of you may not be familiar with. Uh, I know this for a fact, because when I speak to my fellow landscape architects about it, uh, they all go and say, really? I mean, is, is such a thing possible? And they're very excited to implement it. Yeah. So uh, I recently uh, gave the inaugural uh, keynote talk uh, on this particular subject uh, at uh, what was called the Design Guru. Design Guru is a yearly uh, uh, conclave of architects in Bangalore, and it happens in this beautiful uh, uh, area that's been created on the MG Road, which is one of the main roads in the city, but under the metro. So uh, you have the metro uh, track, and under the metro track, a beautiful space has been created uh, by architects, for architects, and other uh, you know, social, uh, not social, cultural events. So I, I gave the inaugural uh, talk 
for that session on the very same uh, uh, topic. So let me now take a screen share and uh, let me just uh, optimize the sound video clip because that's very important for us. Okay, now let me. So what are we looking at here? So let me try to move these things. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So these are two typical examples of uh, uh, sensory gardens that I had designed. One is in the DLF area in uh, New Delhi. It's one of the uh, terrace uh, gardens. It's a balcony garden, actually. They have huge balconies, and this is one of the balcony gardens. And the other one is actually a podium uh, garden, uh, which is in one of the developments uh, in uh, Hyderabad. And both of these are typical examples of what sensory gardens look like. Yeah. Now, when you look at this garden, it's a pretty picture. But what does it have more than a pretty picture? Yeah. So, ye dono chitra aap dekhenge, photo aap dekhte hain, to aapko ek sundar sa garden dikta hai. Lekin yisme kya rahasya hai, uske baare mein hum jaan pechan karenge isme. So, today, one thing that uh, contemporary landscape architects in India have realized is that gone are the days when we talk only about looks of the garden. Now, people want experience. And we live in an age where experience is at a premium. You go to Italy, uh, I mean, gone are the days when you just went and saw some sites in Italy and you took photographs. Today, they have got Vespa tours. Yeah. So you sit on this Vespa scooters, the old Vespa scooters of India. Uh, they have those Vespa scooters and you go through the city and you experience the city. You go to Morocco, gone are the days when you're just going and seeing the monuments and the castles and all that. Today, you go and you spend a couple of days learning how to dye, how to print cloth. Textile printing, you learn. That is an experience. You go to Norway, you go hiking to the pulpit rock. You go to Masai Mara, it's not just looking at the animals, but the experience is in this hot air balloon and a champagne breakfast. It's the experience. So today is an age, aaj ki zamana aisa hai, jaha ek anubhav ka ek bahut bada mulya rehta hai. Koi bhi... Uh, situation mein wo anubhav hi aap yaad karke rakhte hain. Jo picture hai wo to thode der, thode din ya thode uh, saal wo rahega aapki dimaag mein. Lekin experience wo hamesha aapki zindagi mein rahega. To ek bagiche mein experience kaisa leyane ka hai uske baare mein aaj ka talk hai. And this is actually a concept that is very, very ancient and it belongs to our tradition of uh, Briksha Ayurveda, where we have got gardens which address all our senses. So, in today's garden, aaj ki, aaj ki zamane ki agar bagiche aap le le, to maine ek study kiya ki inka objective kya rehta hai. Aur ye objective jo hai, ye kya rehta hai, is pe hum, uh, uh, hum dekhte hai. You see, the objective importance given to the five senses in today's gardens. If you see here, let me just take my annotate. And yeah, if I take my mouse here, you can see 90% is the visual. And 90% is the visual. So, looks ke liye, kaisa dikta hai ye bagicha? Usi pe jo hai 90% importance diya jata hai. Fragrance is only 8%. So some e, ek raat ki rani, one jasmine or one uh, night queen or one uh, champa is put in for fragrance. Taste, only 1.5% is given importance to taste. And texture, only half a percent. And sound, Really, no importance is given to sound in the garden, except through waterfalls or something like that. 
but through plants, 0%. So how can we change this? How can we create a garden where all five senses are engaged? And ek cheez hai, jab sare five senses engage hote hai, ek bagiche ki experience mein, so it becomes a wonderful garden. Whenever you have all the five senses engaged, then it is a it is a sure shot success. The garden will be a sure shot success. So that is what we are going to look at. So now I'm just showing you some of the plants which are very common in and around, especially in Bangalore and in India. All these plants are very, very common. But you will find similar plants anywhere in the world. Anywhere in the world, you will find these plants. Okay. Now, this particular plant, this is the Abrus precatorius. The plant in Canada is called Gulganchi. And you will find this. You will find this in Madhya Pradesh. You will find it in Chhattisgarh. You will find it in Charkand. You will find it in many, many parts of India, Maharashtra. And the Adivasis make beautiful necklaces with these uh, seeds. And also very interesting that all the seeds will have the same weight. Iska jo weight hota hai, vajan jo hota hai, ye seeds ka, sabhi seeds ka ek hi vajan hota hai. So goldsmiths in the old days used to use this for weighing gold as a measure of weight of gold. Kyunki all the seeds have the same weight. Hai na? But how this actually uh, works in terms of creating sound in the garden. Wo abhi hum dekhte hai. This is Cassia fistula. Hindi mein isko amaltas bolte hai. Iski jo pods hote hai. The pods of this Cassia fistula called the Indian laburnum. It's beautiful showers of yellow flowers. Very beautiful tree. But these pods, these are like wind chimes. When they keep uh, knocking against each other, they create very beautiful sounds. Phyllostachys is a beautiful bamboo and I had used it in one of the, one, as one of the plants in the first slide that I showed you. The wind blowing through this bamboo creates a beautiful whistling sound. A beautiful whistling sound, a howling sound is created by this bamboo. Melaleuca is a very interesting plant because when wind blows through this melaleuca, it's a very, very hardy plant. Uh, in fact, all the plants that I'm going to speak about are native plants. They are indigenous plants. Ye apni desh ki paude hai, jo indigenous hai, aur ye hi, without much care, they establish themselves very well. And melaleuca, when the wind blows through it, you will hear whistling sounds. And this acacia is a very interesting plant. It's actually a wild plant. It's found in our scrub forests. And uh, this acacia coriacea is a very interesting plant. Because this plant, when it grows in pods, it very interesting pistol. Ki awaz aata hai. Tush, tush, tush. You get, you, it's like somebody is shooting around you. It has the sound of a pistol uh, shot and very interesting to experience this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going, I'm going to put together a video now of all just these five plants playing with sound. How will these plants together sound in the garden? We will see this video right now. So now you see this video and this video listen और आपको एक एक्सपीरियंस मिलेगा कि साउंड का कैसे हम पौधों के द्वारा हम गार्डन में बगीचे में यूज कर सकते हैं हाउ कैन वी यूज साउंड फ्रॉम प्लांट्स एज अ फीचर इन आवर गार्डन्स सो इट्स अ वेरी स्मॉल वीडियो इट्स ओनली अबाउट 1 मिनट समथिंग सो आई विल जस्ट प्ले दिस एंड यू कैन लिसन टू इट एंड यू कैन वॉच दिस बट लिसन केयरफुली
you see what happens and how you can use sound in the gardens through plants. We are not talking about some waterfalls or some streams or anything like that. They are also sounds. But how using plants, we can create something so beautiful that you sit in a garden and meditation. It is so beautiful, beautiful voice. पौधों के द्वारा हम ले आ सकते हैं अपनी बगीचे में सो दिस इज अ वे ऑफ हाउ वी कैन इंट्रोड्यूस द फर्स्ट सेंस आई एम नाउ टेकिंग द रिवर्स वे इन द प्रेजेंट गार्डन द साउंड इज गिवन द जीरो परसेंट इंपॉर्टेंस सो नाउ आई एम रिवर्सिंग इट सो आई एम शोइंग यू हाउ वी कैन ब्रिंग इन दउंड एलिमेंट थ्रू प्लांट इन द गार्डन सो दैट वॉज वन थिंग नाउ लेट एस continue further and let us see what we can do with the next sense yeah yeah so now we let us come to the sense of touch you know so in my designs what i normally do is i use plants which people can touch especially children they love touching these plants because like for example aloe vera okay all of you know aloe vera it's a beautiful plant ye apna plant hai it is our plant it's a very important plant and this plant is beautiful because you can touch it you can break it you can take the juice apply it on your skin it makes your skin wonderful and it's a very very interesting plant yeah so this is one plant one example that i am giving you then you can take for example the uh the this one stachys byzantina ye ye plant jo hai bahut hi sundar plant hai and it is also called the lamb's ear एक छोटा बकरी का जो कान होता है वो उसका टेक्सचर होता है इसमें एंड इट इज एक्चुअली अ ब्यूटीफुल प्लांट बिकॉज इट्स सो हार्डी इट रिक्वायर्स वेरी लिटिल केयर इट रिक्वायर्स वेरी लिटिल वाटर एंड इट जस्ट लुक्स सो ब्यूटीफुल एंड व्हेन यू टच इट इट इज लाइक वेलवेट है ना तो जब इसको छूते हैं तो वेलवेट जैसा है कोई एक बकरी के बच्चे का कान को आप टच कर रहे हैं ऐसा महसूस होता है इट्स अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल टेक्सचर दिस इज पेनिसिटम सेटेसियम ये तो आप गार्डन में देखते हैं बच्चों को बहुत पसंद है क्योंकि इसको पकड़ के जो है वो हाथ में ऐसा ऐसा वो दे कैच होल्ड ऑफ दीज सीड्स दिस फेदरी सीड पॉट एंड दे जस्ट ट्राई टू यू नो एज ट्राइड दे ट्राई टू पुल इट यू नो एंड इट्स अ वेरी नाइस वे ऑफ प्लेइंग विद द प्लांट्स एंड जब वो बीज को जो है वो बच्चे फेंकते हैं तो बहुत ही अच्छा है क्योंकि वो कहीं और बैठ के उगता है सो वेन दिस चिल्ड्रन थ्रो द सीड्स इन द गार्डन इट अलाउज फॉर द डिस्पर्सल ऑफ द सीड्स या सो ब्यूटिफुल प्लांटोगो प्लांटागो इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग प्लांट बिकॉज इसका पत्ता जो है ना इट इज लाइक क्रेप पेपर Uh, the color crepe paper that we get out of which we make roses and flowers and all that ye crepe paper ka texture hota hai and plantago is something that all of all of us know aap isab gul ka naam suna hai na you would have all heard of this isab gul it is a high fiber seed that is used to take care of uh, digestive problems you know if you are suffering from sluggish bowel movements and things like that people have isab gul this plant is the producer of isab gol and in ayurveda this is very well known and indigenous plant hai aur iska texture itna sundar hai ki when you touch the leaves it's like touching paper and you can sort of fold it and you can do things with it again it is texture this is of course the bottle brush and sach mein ye bottle brush jaise hi hota hai aur isko ye phool ko touch karne mein bahut maza aata hai so allowing people to touch the plants experience the textures of the plants a ek gas hai jisko zoysia bolte hain it is also called korean grass and a aisa it is quite common actually in some places people lot of people use this on terraces and things like that i use it a lot in my landscapes and children love it because a 
एक स्पॉन्ज जैसा होता है इट इज वेरी स्पॉन्जी एंड चिल्ड्रन कैन रोल ऑन इट एंड दे कैन प्ले ऑन इट दे कैन फॉल ऑन इट it's just lovely yeah so good it is and somewhere in my garden i like to put this touch me not ye mimosa pudica jo hai it is called the touch me not plant kyunki jab bhi aap iske patte ko touch karenge chui mui bolte hain isko when you touch the leaves the leaves will close and it's a very beautiful sight to see so children love it because they come and they touch the plants and they watch the leaves fold and the idea is that you have plants with which you can interact through textures through touch so second sense aapka dusra uh, indriya jo touch ka hai usko aap is tarah se paudon ke dwara aapki bagiche mein aap experience kar sakte hain now taste do you know how many plants are there that you can use in landscape that is that are edible ye sab hum kha sakte hain and bahut hi interesting hai you know onion can be used as a very interesting landscape plant main hamesha apne bagiche mein onion dalta hu kyunki isme do fayde hain there are two advantages one is it is a repellent for many insects you know in ye uh, krimikit jo hai wo aate nahi hai agar onion hota hai to wo bhag jata hai udhar se so i always use and you can eat these spring onion shoots iski patte jo hai aap kha sakte hain aap soup mein laga sakte hain bahut fayde hain iska so onions is one ye hai bacopa moneri bacopa moneri isko hum hindi mein aur ayurved mein brahmi bolte hain it is called brahmi and you know when we were children my grandmother used to always put two two leaves every day in her grandchildren's mouth she said that it will make you intelligent ha huh? and we all grew up eating these brahmi leaves today our children don't know about brahmi so if you grow this in your garden you can teach children that it is a wonderful ayurvedic herb which is got a beautiful taste and you can eat it and it's very good for your body i use betel leaf in my gardens and ye to paan ka patta hai ye bhi aap dal sakte hain creeper jaise is ye iska advantage ye bhi hai ki chhaya mein aata hai this grows in shade and it's a lovely creeper to have and you can enjoy the paan whenever you want this trapeolum is actually a nasturtium it is a wild nasturtium ye nasturtium ka wild variety hai jo bharat mein milta hai ये हमारे पहाड़ में और जंगल में मिलता है इट्स अ पेरिनियल क्रीपर एंड इसके यू कैन ईट इट्स लीव्स यू कैन ईट इट्स फ्लावर्स इट इज सो टेस्टी यू कैन पुट इट इन सैलड्स एंड दिस ट्रोपियोलम इज अ ग्रेट प्लांट ये पत्ते खा सकते हैं फूल खा सकते हैं आप सैलड में डाल सकते हैं इसको खाने के लिए और बहुत ही जबरदस्त प्लांट है ये स्पिलेंथ दिस इज कॉल्ड द टूथ एक प्लांट एंड ये बहुत ही जबरदस्त प्लांट है ये अभी हमारी इंडिया में ये बहुत मिलता था पहले हर एक गार्डन में ये मिलता था अभी तो बहुत मुश्किल है ये इसको मिलना लेकिन ये इतना अच्छा प्लांट है और खास तौर से बच्चों के लिए ये बहुत ही एक मस्ती का चीज है चिल्ड्रन लव इट बिकॉज इफ यू टेक अ स्मॉल पीस ऑफ दिस फ्लावर एंड पुट इट इन योर माउथ योर माउथ स्टार्ट टू सेलिब्रेट इतना सारा आपका सलाइवा निकलेगा और एक बैटरी की एक छोटा करंट जैसा आपका इसमें आता है ये टूथे के लिए हमारी दादी देती थी इट यूज टू बी अ ग्रैंड मदर्स रेमेडी फॉर टूथ एक बट वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग प्लांट दैट यू कैन ईट दिस इज सेंटेलिया एशियाटिका विच इज कॉल्ड जलब्रमी अगेन अ ग्रेट प्लांट विद अ टैंगी फ्लेवर दिस इज बेंथा पैपेरिटा विच इज कॉल्ड स्पियर मिंट आप पुदीना तो देखे हैं लेकिन ये स्पियरमेंट है और ये पेपरमेंट स्पियरमेंट ये बहुत ही अच्छे प्लांट्स है आपकी गार्डन में लगाने के लिए इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल एडिशन टू योर गार्डन विच यू कैन ईट एंड इट्स अ पेरेनियल एंड इट ग्रोज फॉर मेनी सीजन एंड इट इज द स्पियरमेंट देन यू हैव ऑक्सैलिस विच इज द्री लीव क्लोवर दिस इज द ब्राउन कलर्ड वन रस्ट कलर्ड ऑक्सैलिस Corniculata, Oxalis cornic, Corniculata is the botanical name. 
एंड इसकी फूल खा सकते हैं पत्ते खा सकते हैं यू कैन ईट द फ्लावर्स यू कैन ईट द लीव्स एवरीथिंग इज एडेबल एंड देन यू हैव गॉट नाउ वी गो फॉर द स्मेल या स्मेल एंड फ्रेग्रेंस ऑल दीज आर सच वंडरफुल वंडरफुल प्लांट्स फॉर स्मेल एंड फ्रेग्रेंस ये बहुत ही अच्छे अच्छे प्लांट्स है ये पुडलिया एशियाटिका इसको बुई कहते हैं संस्कृत में और वन ऑफ द बिगेस्ट एडवांटेजेस इज ऑफ पुडलिया इज अपार्ट फ्रॉम द लवली फ्रेग्रेंस इट इज गॉट इट इज अ ग्रेट अट्रैक्टेंट फॉर बटरफ्लाईज इनफैक्ट ऑल द फ्रेग्रेंट प्लांट्स विल अट्रैक्ट बटरफ्लाईज बीज एंड ऑल द पॉलिनेटर्स तो इट इज अ ग्रेट प्लांट टू हैव वेरी हार्डी प्लांट it is a wild plant very difficult to kill uh, this is the uh, uh, the ginger top lily again beautiful plant uh, with lovely fragrance uh, this is the dodupatre which is coleus variety and you can break these leaves and you get a lovely fragrance uh, whenever you touch this particular plant uh, this bergmansia is actually uh, people confuse it with datura it is not actually datura it is a relative of datura it is a bergmansia and it has lovely fragrance fragrance that ranges from lemon to lime to ginger that kind of a fragrance uh, this is mirabilis jalapa also called four o'clock plant kyunki 4 baje ko ye open hota hai sham ko iska it grows in the shade lovely fragrance and this is kananga kananga you can see it is there in our ashram also a lot of kananga plants we have uh, this is the plant from which they make the perfume ylang ylang the french perfume ylang ylang is made from kananga odorata then you have the pandanus which has got a beautiful beautiful fragrance and my favorite parijat uh, which is the nictanthus uh parijat it's just a gorgeous plant in the morning if you come out and you see this parijat it will be all like a carpet under the tree in fact uh, at uh, gurudev's kutir uh, his uh, uh, kutir where he stays that entire driveway from the road to the kutir i have planted this uh, parijat and gurudev insists on walking he will stop the car get off and he loves to walk down enjoying the uh these parijats that's all like a carpet on the floor now coming to the last of course the site and you can think that okay site ke liye we have the usual plants we have like the uh you know you have the uh, duranta goldiana hemelia patens and you've got all these plants the hibiscus and all these but apart from that we have got fabulous plants which are our heritage this is all listed in our ayurveda and uh, um, krishi parasara and uh, charaka samiti more than 5000 years ago these were all known to us like for example this shatavari shatavari is actually a variety of asparagus very beautiful plant it grows wild its berries are beautiful its flowers are beautiful matsyakshi is the alternanthara you make a beautiful hair oil with this if you wanted the in the olden days the ladies like shakuntala and all that they used to use this particular plant to make hair oil and if you see ravi verma's painting you understand why ishwara bali ishwara bali the 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 fruits are so fantastic they are like a uh, like a basket you very big in size they are quite big actually in size and the flowers are extraordinary to look at uh, uh aparichita which is the clitoria trinatus and uh, it is one of the beautiful plants from which you can make glue tea uh, if you just boil the, if you just put these flowers in uh, uh, boiling water the whole water turns blue sky blue in color and if you drop uh, put a drop of lemon juice it turns pink and uh, uh, the kim kardashians and sharukh khan they made it very popular because they said it it, it is anti aging so everybody started buying these uh, clitoria trees uh, trees a uh, teas and uh, they pay a bombshell for that but this is a, a creeper that grows wild in our country sarpaganda sarpaganda is a wonderful flower uh, flower rovolfia serpentina it is a very very important plant uh, for snake bites and things like that you can use this plant but it's again such a beautiful plant that you can use in landscape it is a plant that is more than 5000 years old in our tradition 
देन धाटकी धाटकी इज वुड फोडिया very very beautiful plant anything to do with nervous disorders alzheimers parkinsons this is a plant then you've got mansevi mansevi in tamil means deer's ear ha jo mrig ka kaan hota hai wo naam diya gaya hai and this clinia uh, grandiflora it's a wild plant again it looks like uh, our jade plant but it's a wild plant it has got beautiful flowers and it looks so pretty and you got uh, trivrit trivrit is operculina uh, and it's again its flowers will dry up but they will look like this for 6 months they will look like this it's a beautiful creeper uh, you got more vasaka for example adathoda it's also called adathoda other Adathoda Adath 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 vasika uh, or, but the scientific name is justicia uh, adathoda and it looks like the laughing lion if you close if you go close to this flower it looks like the face of a laughing lion again it's a beautiful plant with lot of medicinal uses why is this plant called agni sakshi because it looks like fire it looks like flames beautiful plant again you can find this in our forests very common in india gloriosa superba uh, now proselia is called kushtanashini kushtanashini is actually means kushta means uh, a hair and this is one of the uh, beautiful plants which promotes hair growth so recently the french discovered it and it's now if you google for uh, 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 sorelia you will find lot of literature on its ability to uh, to con combat baldness this is krishna kamal it's the passion flower but it's red in color beautiful plant then we've got sarpasila the indian sarpasila which is the hemidiscus you know the sarpasil drug uh, which is for controlling your blood pressure comes from this plant uh, brihati is our wild solanum again a beautiful plant in landscapes uh, throna pushpi is a great flower uh, lucas and you can use the dried stems of these flowers uh for decoration in ikabana and all that kemuka is a insulin plant costus uh it's very good for combating insulin and again i will end this chat uh in this presentation by saying combining all these plants we can create the most incredible garden experience where all your five senses get engaged and you have a beautiful experience not just looking at the garden and saying oh very pretty garden no every part you will smell something you will touch something you will hear something you will taste something and it will be pleasant on your eyes so this is what this presentation is all about and on the dot uh, exactly 35 minutes that's what i had promised rahul i have finished my presentation exactly 35 minutes so we will now concentrate on your questions so um, how would you like to do this uh, i could open the chat and maybe i will request rahul to sort of give me uh, 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 to take questions and uh, so that i can answer them and then if i see questions i will also answer rahul you want to take something and that is relevant to be discussed you can unmute unmute yourself rahul okay sorry i'm just going through the questions that uh, people have already shared on the chat box those who want to share the questions just share it on the chat box we'll pick up the relevant ones only and we'll get those questions answered okay I'll start from the starting. So Madhvi is asking, can the Korean grass be grown in the shade? Ah, so Korean grass actually requires a bit of sunshine. Shade me, you will get another one, which is called the Nilgiri grass. Nilgiri grass is also the Mexican grass, also similar texture, not as spongy as this one, but will do. You can use the Mexican grass or Nilgiri. They say in Delhi, they call it Nilgiri. नीलगिरी ग्रास बोलते हैं नेक्स्ट व्हाट इज ऑप्शंस फॉर कोल्ड क्लाइमेट इंडो प्लांट्स सुदा इज आस्किंग 
ओ इंडोर एक्चुअली यू कैन प्लेस एनी थिंग बिकॉज इन साइड द हाउस आपको कोल्ड है बाहर आपको जीरो डिग्रीज भी है तो इन साइड इट विल नॉट बी जीरो डिग्रीज ना सो इंडोर प्लांट्स जनरली द रेंज इज द सेम सो ऑल दिलोडेंड्रॉन्स एग्लोनिमस ड्रेसिनस डेफेन बेकियस ऑल दो विल वर्क वेरी वेल सो देर इज नो प्रॉब्लम इन दैट can you please share ditya says centella centella asiatica is called jalabrami and one of the beautiful things about jalabrami is it can take excess water agar aapke garden mein ek aisa jagah hai jahan hamesha bahut shade rehta hai aur moisture nami pan rehta hai to centella asiatica is a very beautiful plant and centella asiatica is called jalabrami it's a ayurvedic plant you can take the patta and eat it it's very good for many things apart from you know clearing your head agar pitta zyada ho jata hai to aap ye do patte dal dijiye aapka stomach mein pitta ki wajah se bahut upset ho gaya take this so it's a very interesting plant yeah um yes. where do we get these plants in bangalore go to the ayurveda nurseries you will find one in the bangalore university then one in the city in the ayurveda college is there so go to the ayurveda nurseries you will get many of these plants there yeah. um can we plant them in jodhpur yes jodhpur also they will grow no problem actually kya hai na ki these are all indigenous ye sab desi plants hai aur ye kahin bhi ugta hai these are not very high you know like imported hybrid plants and things like that these are not delicate darlings these are very hardy isko maarna bahut mushkil hai like uh, all these brahmis and jalabrahmis and all when you plant it is very difficult to kill it it grows so beautifully hai na so um um colder regions i am not into be keeping i am into beekeeping yeah uh, yeah in fact our, uh, our trust conducts lot of beekeeping courses and all that so you can definitely connect uh, what else do we have any more questions please yes, suggest oh yes uh, asking uh, uh, are there any flowers or plants that can be planted to keep insects away but also serve a sensory purpose yes absolutely you can do um, citronella which is lemon grass that's very very good it keeps the mosquitoes away vetiver vetiver grass is an again a very very uh, interesting grass and it's also very good for erosion control uska roots bahut hi zabardast hota hai jo khas bolte hai na vetiver is khas khas is a grass yeah so khas uh, vetiver uh, then uh, you have got uh, plants like uh, justicia that's also a very good plant uh, that you can have uh which repels uh insects uh so you have lot of plants yeah please suggest Me. creeper flowers that are colorful and fragrant oh my god not one or two i mean there are tons of them like for example the gloriosa yeah the gloriosa agnish uh, agnishakshi yeah gloriosa it's a very beautiful plant very fragrant very very gorgeous plant uh many plants are there rangoon creeper railway creeper vernonia which is called the curtain creeper bridal veil creeper all these are very fragrant plants um uh can these plants be potted in uh, put in pots yeah they can they can be potted as well so that's how a lot of the balcony gardens are established uh, where you have planters or you have large pots and you can grow them uh, where can we find these plants i have answered that uh how can uh, they be grown in pots how many of them can be grown in pots so you have to design the garden because all the plants will come to full at different seasons okay some plants will be doing very well in summer like for example citronella for example uh, you have got the the uh, the penicillium grasses for example they do very well in summer whereas you get other plants you know like glorios uh, and uh, for example our uh, ginger top uh, lilies and things like that which do very well in the cooler climates so yeah is it possible to grow them in delhi yeah one of the pictures that i showed was from the dlf area in delhi uh, in gurgaon 
Uh, air purifier plants which can be kept 365 days. Oh, yes, Nilesh, we have. Uh, Gurudev identified five plants for us. Uh, aloe vera, money plant, uh, the uh, mother-in-law's tongue, Sansevieria, uh, then the uh, philodendron, and the syngonium, the arrowhead plant. These five, Gurudev himself said that they are very good for uh, air purification. Yeah. Um, where can you get them in Delhi and CR? Just look around in your nurseries. Delhi has got a lot of nurseries. Also look for the Ayurvedic nurseries. You will find them in Ayurveda colleges and things like that. So you will find a thing. Archana ja to every Archana ji. Oh, hello. He, she is my fellow trustee uh, in the trust. So lovely to have her here. Um, yeah, so uh, it's difficult to find seed of these suggestions or actually na, aap isko khojne ke liye shuru karenge na, you will find these are very easily available. These are not any extraordinary plants. They are actually very easily available. Once you start going on Facebook, searching for people who are sharing Ayurvedic plants, Ayurveda, you should go for Ayurvedic plants, not horticulture plants, not nurseries. You should go for the Ayurveda plants, Ayurveda uh, botany gardens, or Ayurveda uh, collectors of Ayurvedic plants and herbs. You will find all these plants very, very easy to find them. A uh, lot of you have appreciated the, the presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, the grace of the master uh, that we are getting such knowledge. Um, what do you uh, grow in waterlogged conditions? Waterlogged conditions, uh, all the ginger family, you know, like the insulin plant that I uh, uh, showed you, the uh, uh, ginger top lily that I showed you, um, the jalabrami, all these are very good in waterlogged conditions. Um, yeah, sorelia uh, is turned into oil. Um, how does the potency uh, change? Um, well, uh, yeah, yeah, you, uh, I mean, I have now, let me just go back to the screen share and I will tell you what we are talking about. Now, uh, yeah, so we have got, uh, yeah, sorry. Where did we have? Yeah, it will come before this. One second, let me just see where, where I missed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this Kushtanashini, actually what they are doing is, I don't know whether they are extracting the oil, but we are actually uh, taking the flowers of this plant and then we are boiling, we are putting it into hot coconut oil. And that coconut oil is used to, uh, to uh, apply on your hair or bald patches. Maybe I should also check that out. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, Kushtanashini is a big thing. The French are trying to, you know, really make this into a, a big industry. Um, so, they are extracting that and making it into, uh, you know, like uh, uh, syrups and things like that, that you can put. So they're, and they're trying to make it into capsules and all kinds of things, pastes and all that. So that is also something that is harsh climate of Haryana. See, harsh climate of Haryana is in the summers. So in the summers also, there are plants which will grow, but then other season, the monsoon and the winter in Haryana is very, very conducive for a fragrance garden. No, so um, while designing a Kameshwar, while designing a landscape, what are the parameters to look for? So, I mean, that's landscape architecture. But abhi ke liye na, I wish you make a start by just collecting some of these plants. Collect up one plant which is lovely to touch one plant which is great on the smell, one plant which you can eat, one plant which makes noise, you know. So like that, you know, just start 
a collection once you start you yourself will start putting it in the garden you know you don't need any uh, rocket science for this apne aap ko pata chalega isko kahan lagane ka hai garden mein collection start kijiye my idea of this presentation is to inspire people ki instead of doing the usual you know imported hybrid roses and hibiscus and all these imported plants you know these jatrupas and uh, you know all these uh, durantas and uh, homescoldias and hemelia petens and all which you find in any garden any garden you go you'll find the same plants instead of that why don't we look at our own heritage our own plants plants which are described 5000 years ago by our ancestors why don't we use those plants they are already well suited for our area they are already very hardy for our area so why don't we use that that is the uh, plants yeah where can we get these plants nilesh i have been answering that question i think i have answered that uh, always in oh natasha thank you so much um, can these plants survive all the four seasons so all the plants will not survive all the four seasons that's a beauty in some seasons some plants will come up the other plants will go in between but they will not die they will be there as the season changes one will go down the other will one will come up so this is something beautiful like you know in the west they talk about the changing of the colors of a forest you know as the spring comes there will be colors as the autumn comes there will be colors like that your garden also it changes you know it's very beautiful these days we don't get the pink rose yeah the original akhtar rose yeah the akhtar uh, rose which is the old rose the native variety we don't get it you're right what seeds to make korean korean grass actually doesn't come as seed you buy this as a carpet you know one foot by one foot or a roll you know they will give it you instant you lay it and it's ready uh one for the teeth that is the toothache plant yeah spilanthus spilanthus got a very interesting history one of the michelin star chefs you know because so much saliva is produced in your mouth he used it as an aperitif um Uh, as a sorbet sorry not as an aperitif sorry my my mistake he used it to prepare a sorbet you know sorbet is used suppose you have a five course meal after you eat the first course you want to cleanse your palate so that your tongue is ready to taste the next course so you have a sorbet he created a sorbet with this toothache plant and it got a michelin star award it was uh, it was given a prize michelin prize for that dish uh, for that sorbet he made yeah so very interesting all again you know all indigenous plants these are all our plants this is in our dna it is our parampara it is our history tradition you know uh, can we take some consultation for such establishing such gardens surely you can uh, uh, sati ready for sure you can take consultations no problem at all mosquito repellent plants yeah uh, uh, lemon grass citronella kush uh, no kas uh, kas grass bitti ver uh, then uh, ginger top uh, onion <laughs> plants all these are very good onion garlic and all very good for plants are there any workshop or classes we don't have we have got a uh, uh, we have got a sri sri home gardening course maybe you can start with that in fact kritika is a wonderful teacher of that course maybe you can connect with her um uh, archana ja is again a brilliant student of mine she is in delhi so you can connect with her uh, so all that miss the presentation um uh, plants that scare bandicoots really i don't know um can we share the recording i'm sure because i am recording now so we will share the recording yeah uh precatorius uh, abrus precatorius how does it make when the seed bursts aapne dekha na wo jab phatta hai thyu thyu you get the sound yeah uh tried brahm applying brahmi leaves as a paste you never apply brahmi as paste aloe vera you can apply as paste brahmi you just put it in your mouth uh castor plant sound yes castor why bindi do you know a bindi plant when the seed pod dries up if you watch in the late evenings 
you will hear this sound khatak 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 it will be many plants many plants are there i just gave one one example but you have many plants any plants which rodents and squirrels will not eat and destroy adathoda justicia adathoda you know the how that name adathoda came in scientific uh, name it came because it came because in kannada aadu tottada gida that means even a cow or a goat will not eat that plant that is how the name aadu tottada gida became adathoda the british made it adathoda and that's how he called they called it adathoda vasika huh? Uh, but then the actual scientific name then they change it to justicia uh, arthoda that's a great plant nothing will touch it so if you're doing some public spaces where you don't have any protection and you still want a uh, nice plants to be there that is a good choice for you can we grow algae and acacia in pots i don't know why you would grow algae but acacia definitely you can grow in pots um vines that like shade <laughs> pan you know put pepper we can put pepper but pepper is difficult to grow pan deadly plant it's a fabulous plant to grow yeah all varieties of oxalis are edible actually all varieties of clover even if it is green in color is edible it's got a nice tangy taste to it yeah so it is uh, wow thank you so much valeri uh so lots of uh, toothache plant yes 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 that is correct uh it is used as an anesthesia to remove the tooth in the old days they use it as a toothache plant yeah boundary protection plants i think the yuccas are a good choice for you yuccas then you can have uh, what else uh, jatropas they don't require any water or anything like that only the rainy season you plant it it has got thorns also so you know it will uh, protect you yeah so i think we are more or less on track and uh, Uh, uh rahul will post the uh youtube video of this so we will post it on youtube and uh, so all of you can go through it and you can share it with your friends so once again rahul thank you so much kritika thank you so much uh, for the introduction and uh, rahul we hope we can have sessions this is little bit different because i am wearing the landscape architects hat today normally i am taking natural farming or i am taking those kind of uh, you know mandala vatika and all that but this is again i think it's a part of our culture it's a part of our heritage so i think we should know about these kind of things yeah so thank you one and all happy new year to each and every one of you and for concluding remarks over to you rahul jai gurudev thank you prabhakar ji uh, i agree with most of them who all said that it's a pleasure to listen to you always so i'm one of them it's a pleasure to listen to you and also to the audience who have been participating in all the sessions that we are organizing and as prabhakar ji said that i am behind him every two months to conduct a session so we will very soon have another session with uh, prabhakar ji so yeah happy new year and we'll share the recording on the group if you have any questions after this session after we end the meeting you can just ping me maybe based on that we can decide what the next topic should be for prabhakar ji so it's not like ending here you can send me the questions we'll figure out how we can help after the meeting ends we'll share the recording of course on the groups thank you thank you prabhakar ji for your time thank you jai gurudev everybody thank you happy new year